Hi folks, so it seems every couple of years I get the bug to see what is available in the feature phone market. Um, you know, I take a look at smartphones and I think, well, they can do an awful lot. And I, you know, think about the alternative of, you know, possibly not always carrying a rather featureful computer in your pocket everywhere you go. And uh, in previous videos on this channel, I've talked about the original Nokia 3310, which is a phone that I quite enjoy. So I went back to take a look at what uh, the Nokia feature phones are available. So I went out and I got a Nokia 105, which actually appears in pretty much most like top 10 feature phone lists. And I got the Nokia 106, which is also quite highly spoken about, but not as widely available. Uh, the Nokia 106 is uh, dual SIM, if I remember correctly. Yep, dual SIM. And then the Nokia 105 is single SIM, but they look very similar. I've got them right here. This is the 106. This is the 105. Can you tell the difference? Really not. They're very, very standard, what you might expect feature phones. So this is a little bit of a first impressions video, but actually, coincidentally, a last impressions video because they're shit. Really embarrassingly, horrendously bad. Now, the actual handset themselves, the hardware, is what you might expect out of a very standard feature phone. Um, and these are marketed as phones that you might give to maybe an elderly relative who doesn't like the complexity of a smartphone or they're marketed as a backup phone uh, that you might want to keep in your car because they can go for long periods of time without needing to be charged or things like that. But there was one thing when I opened them up and I saw this on a couple of reviews and I should have paid more attention to them. But because the spe this specific issue was so few and far between, I sort of assumed that the people writing these reviews might have got like a knockoff phone that was sold, you know, uh, as a Nokia 106 or a 105, uh, which is the operating system itself, right? So this is your standard desktop and you can go into the menu and you get your standard array of apps. However, if you were to go down, now I'm, I do apologize for this not being particularly good display, you're gonna see a few games there. Actually, quite a few games there. Um, in fact, I would say maybe about a third of the icons on the home screen are games. Not good games, Tetris, Snake, you know, that kind of thing, Ninja Up. So what happens if you click on a game? You can either play five free trials of it or buy it for five British pounds that comes out of your credit. And then now the complaints that I read on the various websites were I bought this for granddad or whoever, and he ended up just spending 20 quid without really knowing how he did it. He fumbled over a few of the keys, looked at some of the games, and before he knew it, he was 20 pounds out of pocket. Basically, a third of the Nokia operating system on this feature phone dashboard is apps, uh, is advertising. There are six games here which are pre-installed and you have no access to unless you pay £5. £5 is a lot for a shitty game on a phone that's not designed to play games you probably don't want to play games on. That really bothered me. And I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Both phones have the exact same operating system. Both phones have the same issue. Some complaints when I started looking through forums started saying that actually uh, the phone, you know, like several years ago, a phone, a feature phone that they bought was actually quite good. And then an over-the-air update actually added in these games, put them onto the desktop or the dashboard, and then suddenly they just had these games that were installed, but had to you had to pay to activate them. Which I'm kind of surprised trading standards here in the UK even allows. Um, like, it's clearly, to me, I, I would interpret that as, as advertising. Um, it's certainly incredibly skeezy and also really incredibly stupid. Like, the people buying these phones, particularly those that want to use them on a day-to-day -day basis, they're trying to get away from shitty apps. They're trying to get away from the over-corporatization of, 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 of smartphones. And, and they just want a device that makes calls and text messages. That's all most people want. Maybe a calendar, maybe a flashlight, maybe, right? Not essential, but okay. Put those on there if you must, right? People want a Nokia 3310 that's maybe just a little bit slimmer and the battery lasts a little bit longer. That's what they want. And then you can charge with uh, with a USB. That's what I wanted, right? I wanted a phone that I could charge through USB, quite convenient. I wanted a, I wanted a phone that has long battery life, calls, texts. That's all I wanted. All I wanted. And whilst these phones technically can do that, 
the fact that it's it's uh, putting advertising in my face for like literally a third of the dashboard, six apps out of 15. Um, 15, 16, including settings, all right? So basically a third of the dashboard is just apps that are installed, you can't use, and you have to pay five pounds, which is too much anyway, to play bloody Tetris. Like, that's ridiculous. Uh, and, and to be honest, it's embarrassing. Like, why the hell? Like, like I'm not touching a Nokia. I'm taking these phones back. I'm going to get a complete refund. And I'm not going to pick up a Nokia device ever again, if I'm completely honest. This has soured me uh, to to the idea of Nokia that used to be like, you know, they used to be this grand company that had, do I even have, I think I might have the, I don't know if I've got, no, I don't have the 3310 like right here to hand. That's a really good phone. That's a phone for the ages. It's iconic. And they just cannot do that like a lot of people just want that but just mildly modified you know mildly modernized right and it seems that i you know it, it seems like it's a decision by the corporate goons ruining stuff for everyone yet again right if there's something they can stick a price tag on they're gonna do it and then stupidly enough you know every single feature phone they got because it's part of their operating system it's part of this like feature phone operating system that nokia have brought out so it's across the board for all of their phones so i'm looking at phones anything that's not nokia and to be honest not to make this too ranty this is a rant video we all know it um is that like i'm really disappointed how many phones particularly the how many lists on tech websites recommend the 105 like they clearly haven't used it they clearly have just generated content by going to an amazon like you know store page and just like looking at the features and then based on that oh nokia quite a well-known and reputable company do a lot with feature phones must be good and then stick a load of uh you know nokia devices on on the top 10 feature phone lists um for those of you that are unaware with the term the term feature phone is like a phone that's not a smartphone um but yeah like you you take one look at the 105 and you think this doesn't belong on any top tech of anything list i bought it because it was cheap it was it cost me less than 20 british pounds probably in the ballpark of about 20 us dollars uh, and it's the same price the nokia 106 was was the same price as well the price is pretty indistinguishable um but i'm even going to go out my way to take it back even just to make a point like this is embarrassing for nokia like a company that can't even bring out a smartphone uh can't even bring out a feature phone that that just does that just doesn't laden you with pointless apps and advertising the problem of smartphones it's ridiculous um other than that they're basically fine like they're just a smartphone uh, they're just a feature phone rather they're just a phone that makes calls and texts and there is uh, you know an alarm clock and a flashlight and all that you know like the, the basics of it which is fine um but it is just literally the you know the, the those within a company that can't help but monetize everything they possibly can just not leaving well enough alone that we seem to be past this age where i just want a, a device that does the thing that it's supposed to do and i'm willing to put money down for it but then that's never enough money there's always going to be a follow-up purchase or there's always going to be you know some apps that that you you don't need or don't want who the heck is buying a feature phone for games the the kind of people that probably want to buy a feature phone also probably just carry a book with them if they need if they, if they need to like pass the time like it's not like who the heck is playing bloody tetris on on this keypad this mediocre keypad right you know it's not even like oh you look at this and you think oh this is fine hardware it's not it's okay hardware it's just a phone and that's all people want like no one's expecting a grand piece of art no one's expecting anything more more and like i say the, the the hardware's fine enough. It doesn't need a color screen either. That's that's some kind of you know that's 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 overkill. And uh, yeah, all I can say is disappointed beyond belief, really, that the fact that they do have to kind of you know eke in basically ads on the desktop, ads on you know ad, ads on the dashboard, no matter how you want to call it. I ain't touching a Nokia feature phone ever again. You know, combine this with the uh, what was it the um, that e-reader that I was, uh, I was I was going on about in the other video, crikey, you know, trying to get some like basic electro like electronics that just do the thing that you want to do seems to be getting harder and harder by the day now, and it's really disappointing, especially when like you know, a smartphone does what this does better now, right? Because like if I wanted shitty apps, there are plenty of shitty apps on a, on a regular smartphone, like and they're not you know smartphones aren't necessarily through the roof. If you want to get a cheap one or a second hand one or anything like that, um, and the fact that this is cheap, you know, like you know, this isn't any more private, you know, 
this might this might be giving my data to like a handful fewer big tech companies but you know um in many cases at the end of the day it's it's not private like it's still handing my data over it's still easy you know um all phones do it's the nature of phones right so um it's not necessarily a privacy thing it's just a, a simplicity of life thing it's this idea of having a good solid handset that you can just ring people on really more over anything else don't have to charge too often but when you do you can you can put it in a standard charger so you know with the nokia 3310 the battery doesn't last as long as you really is it as it really ought to and you have to have a special specific charger for it which is kind of fine i guess but at that stage you know that's it does it beat the old traditional nokia 3310 not by a long shot in all all things considered and um yeah, I couldn't. I literally couldn't be more disappointed with how Nokia um, roll out their feature phones now, and I'm disappointed with the the tech websites that go along with this nonsense. Which, quite frankly, they're probably just churning out articles without even having a clue what the 105 is or the 106. But yeah, Nokia feature phones. It's 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 just it's just ridiculous at this stage now. Um. So yeah, you know, because because these as as handsets, they're no better than any other basic feature phone handset they're just they're just you know there's nothing there's nothing particularly bulletproof about them they feel just as fragile if you know which is not particularly fragile they just feel like a normal handset really um so yeah you know disappointed really um and and not only disappointed in the in in you know in the, in the phones itself but it's the fact that it comes with an operating system which even like seems to be updated over the air which is something i don't want or need right why is my operating system on a phone so complicated that it needs over the air updates right phone text all you need everything else is superfluous right maybe a clock with an alarm clock you know like a like an alarm clock you know basically the stuff that the 3310 had really the original not the new one because the new one suffers the same issues as this and i know people that have used the nokia 3310 and have ended up spending money on it that they didn't know right Honestly, I think, you know, like, um, this is, you know, I, I, I think this is, this is good in the, the, the realms of, of what trading standards should allow, but they ain't, cut, you know, chasing Nokia down or anything. So I guess that's about it from me today. This is just a little rant video about how I'm never touching a Nokia feature phone ever again. Um, but thank you folks very much for joining me. Um, just to update on my previous video, I'm of course no longer streaming on Twitch, but have, you know, on occasion may stream on, on, onto YouTube, either on this channel, if it's not to do with gaming or over on my gaming channel, gaming with werewolves, uh, which, uh, is, is gaming probably, you know, like less frequently and all that considered, but as, as I mentioned in the previous video, the reasons why, but yeah, uh, I've got a gaming channel. I'm putting a lot of content on there at the moment. And although it's all to do with gaming, some of it is like general chatting with friends over a game. So if you are interested in, in, in more like free form content that I make, uh, gaming with the werewolves might be something that's, uh, that's up your street. Um, but give a look and, you know, if you don't like it, you don't like it, but yeah, that's where I'm putting a lot of time these days. Cause it's just where, you know, it's, it's, just where I'm making the content that I kind of enjoy at the moment. You know, you know me, I flitter around. Um, but yeah, yeah, the Nokia feature phones, not worth the time. Just, you know, they, 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 they don't offer any advantages over a basic smartphone and they only offer disadvantages, at least with like a standard, you know, Android operating system, you kind of know where you stand, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it, it just doesn't feel as sleazy. You know, it doesn't have apps on the desktop that, that try and uh, claw money off of you. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, Nokia, man, dodgy as hell, dodgy as hell. It, that is the kind of thing I would expect from, you know, like a, like a dodgy knockoff. That, that kind, those kind of like, you know, follow-up sale, you know, like, you know, ways that you can buy apps uh, than that, that sort of, you know, can, you can even buy them by mistake if, if you're, uh, you know, a bit clumsy or not particularly good with handsets. Um, yeah, ridiculous. Um, so there we go. Couldn't be more disappointed with the with, with Nokia feature phones right now. But I'm going to look around and see what other companies have to offer. And I'll probably report back to you folks. So thank you very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware. And you've been awesome. Toodaloo.